The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too and there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where you can offer clients access to local and international investments. A world where you can engage with clients meaningfully, backed by powerful data and insights with mobile-friendly technology. A world where you can build business efficiencies through scaled managed accounts and bulk reporting. And a world where you can get all the latest news, research and insights to spot the changes that really matter. Wealth is more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. A world of opportunity awaits you at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Hello and welcome to the Ensemble Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter diamond Titus. well I seem to be today anyway, and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into Financial Writers Australia was actually a marketing manager for an online business, then shifted to a similar role in a financial advice firm, and while at Financial Writers still juggles marketing for an advice firm as part of her week. So we have some valuable experience to learn from here, folks. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Kelly McKay, woo! Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. Thank you. (laughs) You are very welcome. Now, very keen to dive into Financial Writers. This is a bit of a different episode uh, this week, folks, because this is not an app so much as a web service, I guess you could describe it as. Um, But before we, you know, get into that, uh, listeners know that we start with getting to know you, Kelly, is via your use of technology. So, what is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? I do. I'm okay. a prolific emoji user. My most, having young children, my most common one is usually the monkey with the uh, hands in front of the face, right. hiding the eyes because it's up there, some funny story I'm telling someone. Either that or a smiley face. I do love the good old smiley face. Yeah, they're not bad, are they? No. Well, and I, I laugh, in fact, um, because it would be easy to assume that somebody who, say, writes for a living isn't into emojis, but I know anybody in marketing loves them, right? Oh, because yeah. that's no. another way to communicate. So. They're the best. Save some oh, yeah. typing. Just use an emoji. Exactly, right? You could write yep. four sentences or you could use one emoji. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right. And so if you had, like we all live with our smartphones, you know, mine is sitting right next to me as, as we speak. Mine um, too. If you had to delete everything off your smartphone, all of the apps and just keep three, which ones would you keep? Definitely Instagram. I would have to probably keep the good old business manager, Facebook pages, meta pages, whatever they're calling it these days. Yep. And I love real estate, so I would keep the real estate app as well. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. My my mother always worked in real estate, so I think it's come from that. So I love looking at houses. That's fantastic. (laughs) So is it just sort of stalking properties? Like, oh, that one's nice. Basically just a a house stalker. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, you know what? That's the first time that app has come up on the show. So well done. There you (laughs) go. Well done. (laughs) All right. Let's dive into financial writers, shall we? So for those that are unaware, just talk talk us through what Financial Writers Australia is, um, and then we can talk about, hey, you know, how does that impact financial advisors and what they could do? So what what is the website? What does it do? So the website is basically an online library full of financial content. So we've got financial articles, infographics, ebooks, social media cards, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's a subscription-based business. So you pay your subscription, you log in, and you can download your content uh, whenever you need new content for your website, social media, blog, 
any marketing endeavor you have. We do have a few um, subscribers that currently use it to create videos or even use it in their local paper as their editorial contribution every couple yep. of weeks. Yep. Uh, so all content is fully compliant, which is takes a lot of stress off of advisors. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's a great, great way for advisors, mortgage brokers and accountants to save time because we all know we get too busy working in the business rather than on the business. Yeah. So it's a great way to save time and still educate clients and position yourself as a real uh, go-to for your industry to any potential clients out there. Okay. So, I mean, one of the things that um, – I mean, even somebody like myself, and I love writing, you know, yeah. I've even written some books and love writing articles, but I'm betting that one of the biggest problems it's trying to solve is is if you're doing all of this from scratch yourself, it sort of never gets done. Like it just, it's one exactly. of those, exactly. you know, it's you start those, thinking about it. Yeah. One of those jobs you keep putting off because you know you've got to do it, but the time it takes to do it, to come up with the idea, then to actually put pen to paper, then yeah. to pop it up on the blog and all that, it, it's... Yeah, it takes a lot of time when you're also trying to run a business and look after clients. Yeah, and I'm um, no in my um in my understanding, there's not many sort of competing services with what you guys do. So it's not like there's many people out there providing this sort of content that you can sort of use yourself. Um, I, know, I know there are some that you can via an app in terms of you know like a portal that yeah. sort of lets you then white label it yourself. But yeah. in terms of content that we can then do as we will <laughs> with it, almost yeah. you know, I don't know that there are many others. Are you aware of many others that you guys compete with? And no, not really. There are a few that are more marketing agency type based where right. they will post it on your behalf and um, do your social media post sure. and that sort of thing, but not direct competition, no. On content, yeah. Yeah, and so really, um, in fact, you know, I would argue some of those agencies could, could even use a service like yours because it's, hey, use the base content and then turn it yeah. into your brand or your feel. We do have – we are exclusively just for mortgage brokers, accountants and financial advisors. We like – that's our kind of unique selling point that yep. it is content specifically for those industries and it does keep it a bit exclusive then that you're not going to find it across any and every website. Yeah. Um, but we do have a couple of marketing agencies that are also subscribers that do mm-hmm. use it because they specifically type, um, service those areas. Right. And we also have a couple of larger super funds that use our library as well. Okay. Because that's I was curious about that. Like where does, you know, who's getting it? Like who's getting the concept and yeah, utilising it? And we do get that question come up a bit from clients. You know, are you going to see, if I pick an article, how do I not know I'm going to see it on my competition's website? Yeah. But we, we find that because you can change the article any way you want, you can change the call to action, you can change the... Um, the title of the article, take anything in or out that you don't want. Every every user has that their own client base, their own prospective clients they're targeting. So we find that that's not actually an issue in the yeah. long run. Yeah. And so is it as much that um, what you're providing is purely the content and then um, they put their own skin, for want of a better expression on that. So that yeah. then is a, their branding style, you know, That's humor, right. whatever it is. Yeah, um, they and can skin, then change. Right, okay. So skin could mean, you know, what's the what's the toll they use when they share it on LinkedIn. It could be, you know, the way they place it on their blog, you know, the, the images they put with it, all that sort of stuff. They That's can right. tailor themselves along with the content itself. So I'm, yeah. I am curious mm-hmm. of what you're seeing with your clients then. Uh, you know, are most of them – sort of, you know, does the article end up looking completely different to what you guys wrote? Are some of them doing identical? Like we're in this spectrum of just yep. taking it as it is versus really tailoring it for their tone or or style. Where do most of your clients sit? Most sit, most take it exactly as it is Okay, and use it exactly as it is. We do have a few that um, definitely change the call to action and put links to the advisor that would best suit if a client reads the article, would best yep. suit for that sort of um, that topic. Um, we also do have some, though, that are going that extra step and turning, downloading a few articles, turning them into an ebook okay. for their clients, or even into a podcast topic or into a YouTube video. Fantastic. So we got from one extreme to the other. Now, that's an interesting insight because um, all of those things you were just mentioning, people 
you know, actually I get asked all the time, pretty, how do you know what to talk about on a podcast or how do you know what to talk about on a YouTube video? Remembering that words are just words. So, so written words, you guys have pulled together on, you know, to be succinct and clear and really get a message across in the written form. You're right. You can use that for any one of these versions of, of, you know, streaming content via a podcast, via YouTube, via little clips, via all that sort of stuff. And that's yeah. a bit exciting, actually. In my head, I hadn't taken it that far. So that's yeah. that's powerful because you, you just, like you turn the camera on and you're like, oh, no, what am I going to exactly. say? Exactly. <laughs> but, but if you break, grab one of the articles, you grab a few lines out of it and you can keep talking about the topic as most financial advisors do because they're passionate about their job yeah. and their industry. They can grab a few lines out of it and they can talk for five, six minutes for a YouTube video quite easily. Yes. And it just babes them coming up with that idea and then what do I talk about? It just prompts them. So Yes, yes, absolutely. And and look, editing concepts down to a succinct message is not something actually most of us can do. We might think we can, but having had an editor for my book, I've worked out, no, no, most of us don't have that. <laughs> you know, editing is a superpower. So so I think understanding where you guys can really, I mean, completely truncate this process for people um, so that then they don't have to do that and then, you know, they can really give it their own flavour. Um, it could be even where they record the video from or or the, the stories they bring in from their own experience or their client's experience. Is, you know, I think that, wow, that gets us a long way really quickly yeah, um, yeah. in terms of content for sure. Yeah, it's such a great resource for those that, like, we're all time poor these days. Mm. Uh, so it's just such a great resource to be able to quickly log in, download something that you think is a, a topic that's in the news at the moment and you've already got it there ready to go and you can shoot it out in a newsletter to all your clients or prospective clients and it just helps to build that trust in the client's then believe you're on top of it, you're the go-to person for anything financial and, yeah, it's all about building trust with your clients. And, look, I think we pro- you mentioned it briefly, but I think we should probably talk about the elephant in the room being that, oh, but it's going to look the same, you know, and, and yes. what if it's the same as somebody else? <laughs> uh, yes. I reckon if you put 100 advisors in the room, in a room and ask them to write an article about rising interest rates, you would come up with – very similar 100 articles, right? Because yeah. we all come from a similar place and understanding yeah. for these things. And so the content, the underlying content or message is probably going to be the same. Yeah. So it's all yeah. about the flavor we bring to it. You know, it's all about the personality we bring to it. So um, I think we're kidding ourselves if we think what we would write from scratch would be really unique. It, oh, um, definitely. definitely. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, no, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I mean, we and just it, need to be frank there, right? Like it's, I mean, we can all say that, but honestly, it's just not the case. Um, no, and look, and with AI out there now too, look, there's so many things that, how exciting is AI though? It's very, it it's very cool to have a play with. It but, is. But um, yeah, I think it's the internet. There's always going to be something similar or. Yeah, but it's more Absolutely. about getting that, getting your a well written article out to your clients and your prospective clients. Correct. And look for the listener, if you're still doubting whether that's the case, you're like, Peter, that's that's ridiculous. I can write something unique. Then um, just look at your inbound emails from from investment managers. Something will happen in markets, and we all get these stream of emails, which is great. They're being informative, and wow, they get repetitive. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like it's it, yes, it's a different brand. Yes, it's so they get repetitive. So let's acknowledge that the content is it's finance. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it, it's just got some fundamental it's, basics to it. There's only so many ways you can rewrite Correct. the same Co- message. Correct. So utilize yep. something that gets you that far, and then. Make it your own from that exactly. point. And know that the article's compliant so you don't have to worry from that standpoint whether you're, you know, from an ASIC standpoint that you whether you've been compliant with. Yeah. Um, so that's a great selling point too. Yeah, it is. It is. So in terms of how practices sort of um, implement this, then I'm curious of – you know, do you find that mainly it's the advisors that are going in and grabbing the articles and doing it, or do they assign somebody in the team? How does that normally work in a practice? Well, it's fairly varied. It depends on the size of the business. Yep. Um, a lot of single offices, it will be just the financial advisor that will go in and grab the article. But obviously, the bigger organisations, they've got their own marketing team, they've got their own right. marketing coordinator that will dive in and grab perhaps 
look, you can download up to 22 articles a month. So we okay. often have people dive in there, grab their 22 for the month, and then they might not be back and grab some more articles for another few months because they've got enough to fill out right. their content for the next the next month or so. Yeah. Um, but it does vary. It depends on the size of the business. Yeah, okay. And and I, that was going to be one of my questions, actually. In terms of the places that do this well, it sounds like having a bit of a plan, doing some batch brainstorming of what's going to, what you're going to release and when is probably um, more effective than, oh, dang, I've got to write an article. I'll go into the website and grab one. Like, yeah. I'm betting that's the difference between using it well and sticking with it and really having some traction versus maybe then going, oh, this isn't adding value. And so they sort of drop off. Is that valid? Yeah. Look, it is funny. We've got so many, I think there's like now about 450 articles in there, okay. but we do have a spot on the website that has our recently updated. We put a new article up every week and we do find that they're the ones that get downloaded. It's not People don't seem to search for the most current topic. They want the the newest article. Okay. But having said that, the newest article is usually what's trending in the news <laughs> and stuff. Anyway, it usually relates to that anyway. So it's probably a very smart tactic. Yeah, probably. And and I guess um, man, this is what's hard in an advice practice. And and tech is actually a bit similar. Is is we're so busy doing the advice, we don't have structured plans for things like marketing or content or okay. you know managing our tech stacks so so to have to take a bit of a moment sit down with a team and go okay what is the plan going forward um how does this match the webinars we might be doing for clients how does this match you know and all get it lined up um will mean you can take you know full advantage of the content um rather than sort of just panic mode dive in grab an Definitely. article <laughs> yeah it's always <laughs> better it well, it's like in finance, it's always better to have a plan and plan yeah. ahead. So exactly the same. Yeah, if you can plan it out a bit and know that these are your topics coming up and then you can pre-plan posts around them and all that sort of thing as well. So yeah. definitely better to have a plan. And is there somebody you're seeing that utilises the content that surprised you? Like, wow, that's just a great, like they've taken that to a point where it's like, wow, they've really done something creative or interesting or, or um, you know, surprised you in the way that they applied the content? I'm constantly surprised by the ones that turn it into videos the way they can just rock it's like they wrote wrote it all themselves or the way that they can make it sound like it's it's theirs and they own it and they pop it out in a video and it's just I think that's amazing how they do that I yeah I couldn't do it but they do (laughs) such a good job that yeah it's amazing and it's funny you say that because video and audio are a way to make any written word your own. Yeah. You know, it is yeah. an instant way to get your own tone. And I, it's, that sounds obvious, but it's actually hard to do that in writing, to bring your own tone into something. Okay. You've really got to massage it, whereas you just naturally do it when you talk, right? It's, yeah. It just comes across. You emphasize different words. You describe it different ways. So that's an interesting point, actually. And I think, you know, for for the listener out there, you know, seriously thinking about video because it's such a powerful way to connect, you know? And it is a, it can be a scary thing to get in front of the video, <laughs> but it's a great way to get yourself out there, get your persona, personality out there, and you will find them when you get prospective clients or clients coming in, they feel as though they know you. That that um, process of getting them from, to, to move from prospective to an actual client will be so much easier because they feel like they already know you. Yeah. And it is people's, you know, I think some people really struggle to believe that, you know, it's like, oh, really? We all know it's a video. Well, first of all, your brain doesn't, you know, your brain sees a human being and sees sees a person like they're right in front of you. So it's processing going, oh, I know this person and aren't they interesting? And look at you, like it's sort of processing them as if you're chatting to them over coffee. Um, And from personal experience, we're now, I think we were laughing, it's now, this is the 28th episode of the Advice Tech Podcast for Ensemble. And I was at an event just a week or two ago and I had people coming up to me and they'd, hey, Peter, and they'd start talking. And I'd actually never met them before. They feel like they they know you. They do, right? I've been in their little ears talking about, you know, tech and and they've listened to hours of content. And so they instantly felt comfortable and engaged and started chatting, you know, and that's powerful. Yeah, it's like you're an old friend. They trust you. It is. Yep, they – and it it does. It it makes that – um, conversion process from prospective to actual client for a financial advisor, an accountant, whoever it may be, so much easier. 
It is. And, you know, the other thing I think it does really well too is they'll rapidly work out if you're not the right vibe for them. There's nothing worse than when you've got, uh, you know, a a meeting with a client that's that first sort of step and, hey, let's get to know each other and see if we're right for you. And you're thinking, well, you might think you're right for me, but I just don't think we're like the reverse. Like this is not going to work. You're saving everyone some time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, attracting is is really important, but also repelling the people that it just isn't going to work for, I think is equally important. Definitely. Um, so you can focus on the ones that get what you're trying to d- deliver for them. Mm-hmm. So then in terms of the other things that are that uh, you guys pull together, it is more than just articles, right? So you've got quizzes and infographics and ebooks and all that sort of thing. Do you find people utilize so let's so let's talk about the quizzes. Do they utilize mm-hmm. those a lot? Are they something that is a bit um undiscovered and, and needs to be tapped into more? Yeah, I think a little undiscovered. They're a great thing to place on your website to a bit of a call to action, get people involved. Yeah. Um, they're a great thing to use, but they probably do take a little bit more time to set up and things. So right. I can understand it from that perspective. It's not a, just a straight download, plonk on the website, we're done. Yep. So from that perspective, ebooks are always popular because you can you can give those out as a, a as a free gift to someone coming to your website to get them to subscribe to your newsletter or whatever it may be. Ebooks are always going to be popular, I find. Yeah. Look, and I think um, if for somebody who maybe hasn't um, ever done that sort of work themselves, I think it can be a bit intimidating. Oh, you know, and the design and the, oh, you know, and this is really hard. And, and you know, if you feel like you'd have to change the skin a lot on something like an ebook, then, you know, Canva is your friend. Oh, <laughs> definitely. Right. It has yep. got, it, you, with merely, you can pick a color. So if you, if you haven't used Canva before, well, A, please go and do that. Um, oh, check it Can- out. But <laughs> Canva is my best friend. I love right? Canva. Yeah, And I think awesome. people don't realise how easy it is for the non-marketing person. So not only am I a non-marketing person, I'm like – actuarially trained. I'm the complete opposite of creative. There's not, a, there's not a thing about me that's creative, right? You've got to give me rules for creativity. And every artist will roll their eyes when I say that, right? But what Canva has done cleverly is, for example, if there's a template design they've got there for an ebook, then and it's all in pink and you're like, oh, that's not our brand. It should be green. You can pick the color pink, tell it to change all of them to your green, and it just does it throughout the whole document. Exactly. Like it's that stuff, right? It's This is t- only takes a few moments to get it to look exactly like your brand. Exactly. And if and if Canva scares you, there's Upwork, there's Fiverr. You can just yeah. hire a freelancer so easily. Yeah. Send them your logo and they will magically turn it into an ebook for you for a very small price. So yeah. look, there's lots of options out there. There are. There are and we should take advantage of them. And how about so you've also got infographics, right? <laughs> Yep. Okay. And so, and so, is that something that somebody would take as is and have, you know, as a, either part of a newsletter or on the website? Or how do you how do you see those getting utilised? Yeah. Look, they get used. A lot of the shorter ones will get used on social media as well as a social yep. media post. Uh, but yes, in newsletters and also we see them a lot on um, websites as well, um, accompanying a blog post or right. as even as a free download for mm-hmm. someone. We see them on websites as well. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So now it, it, this is sort of content in isolation, meaning that the content's on the website, it's not – well, sorry, I'm making an assumption here, but I'm assuming you guys don't integrate with any tools where you no, know the content gets fed through. No, because it would be very difficult then to pick, hey, what are we going to use and what are we going to apply it to and where does it go and all that sort of stuff. So, so in that sense, um, I get a bit overexcited about integration. Um, so <laughs> – the listener will know that I always ask about that, but it makes perfect sense. This is, you know, a website you go to with the content, yep. you log in and you select what you're looking for and down and download that piece of content. Um, is there anything else that you think, um, you know, the users take a while to discover or utilise? Like is there anything else in there that they just don't realise is there that they could take advantage of? I just feel like that the articles they download could be used in so many more ways. Right. I feel like you download an article, you pop it on your blog. Don't forget to do a social media post about it to direct users to it. Don't forget, if you can, if you're brave enough, to do a little Instagram short story and say, hey, check out, we've just popped up a new blog post. Right. I just think they can be utilised in so many ways. 
That's yeah. That's an interesting. I mean, that's a marketer's bread and butter, right? The repurposing of content, or, or even just making sure it's distributed. But it's a really good point. It's something that I fail at abysmally. <laughs> is, been- is I put a lot of effort into, right? So you guys, we've put all this effort into this piece, great piece of content. We think it's got a great message. We we hope yeah, the reader okay. really gets something useful, and then that's it. <laughs> well, even however you are posting it onto your um, social media, whether you're using like a later program, if you. Um, if you're using your Facebook. Like scheduling, social scheduling, media scheduling tools sort of or anything thing, like that, yeah. Set a recurring one, post it every three weeks for just a couple of months. Yeah. And then you can always come back in 12 months' time. It's still on your blog. You can update your date that you've that you've set it live and you can do it again. Repurposing yeah. is, yeah, so important. And when you think about it, you guys are writing this. Yes, it might be topical because it's been prompted by something. So it's been prompted yep. by interest rates going up or what. But you're right. Yep. Most of this is going to be evergreen content. Most of this is going to be something that applies. That's all the how time. we do write. We try to make it evergreen content, but we also do audit our articles every month. We have a rolling rotation of, and we have our lawyer go through and he makes sure they're obviously compliant with ASIC but he also updates anything in there that needs updating. So right. they are always current. It's such a great such a great thing we can offer to clients too to say that they are current, with, they're ASIC compliant. It's such a great uh, weight off their shoulders knowing they don't have to worry about that. Yeah, absolutely. And and it is something that, um, I mean, the the making sure the message gets, gets out, the revisiting, but also the um, – conditioning for people. I've learned that I need to see things multiple times for it really to get through, mm-hmm. you know, and generally in multiple ways, right? So, mm-hmm. so you know, potentially consider aligning what your um, client webinar, you know, topics you're covering with the blog posts you've been writing during that period with the social, but like really consider some consistent messaging because it takes a few goes to get through. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the, um, the running one was it was it seven times it takes yes. to yeah right and so we can't and also <laughs> I love this like we all know that we scroll right so so a lot of what's on our feed we don't even see right oh, scroll nah. scroll 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 yeah. but when we write or produce content and post it we assume everybody sees it oh, of course <laughs> like, <laughs> we, it's like well we post it once but they all saw it I can't do that again yeah <laughs> and it's no, classic no right? they probably haven't they probably, probably haven't. haven't. Yeah, reuse, reuse. Correct. The percentage is actually really low of people that will see that post. So, you know, understanding that maybe, like you say, if you schedule it out, you could potentially even schedule it out at different times, you know, to try and catch different people. A lot of those scheduling tools do have the recycle button that you click and then they will automatically for you. Yeah. keep doing it so yeah 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 it's it's um i laugh because i'm like that all the time i really do focus on the you know the initial creation and i don't really focus on making sure the message gets out there so oh, it's a really do. yeah it's a really important message um and it sounds like to me too um you know if you're going to do- go down this path get some great content that you can consistently refer to it's probably worth also working out how are you going to consistently distribute it? So if you don't have a scheduling tool you use for social media, maybe consider it. Like maybe yeah. you should just get a bit organized. Um, thank goodness LinkedIn now lets you do scheduled posts because it used to drive me nuts with LinkedIn about how you sort of had to sit there waiting um, if you didn't use a scheduling tool. So so yeah, think about which channels and, and maybe consider a scheduling tool because the combo of that with this great content could really get your content humming. This could really get your definitely, messaging humming. definitely. And you'll find people popping up uh, talking to you in the supermarket and you don't ever know because they read your exactly. content. They like it. You'll have fans. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be trending. <laughs> Woohoo. Exactly. <laughs> and so how about what's coming, you know, up down the track? Um, more content, I'm betting. Uh, is there anything that you guys are looking to do a little differently or anything coming up that you've got a, on your sort of project plan that we can get excited about? Oh, well, speaking of social (laughs) media and (laughs) and posting and those sort of things, we've just rolled out to our existing clients social media posting and blog posting for them on their websites. Wow. Okay. So we've just just rolled that out. So we post a new article every fortnight for them and a post, social media post that obviously directs their clients back to the website blog. Um, So we've just rolled that out and then in the next, 
while we're hoping in just a couple of months, we'll also be rolling out um, e-newsletters as well for clients that will link back to the website and the blog posts as well. So Fantastic. very exciting times. Well, and while I've got you, you know, and, and listener, you guys, you know, just chill out because I'm just going to get some uh, <laughs> marketing expertise here, folks. No, cheeky. So um, in terms of e-newsletters, I'm really curious because – I'm noticing, so I just got one actually last night that was from the CEO of a football club, like of a rugby league club, right? And they, so the CEO is writing out, you know, in my year ahead and, or your, you know, the club's year ahead. And you had to scroll five times to see this tome, this huge <laughs> thesis he'd written, right? And as I read it because I'm curious enough, yeah. um, but I'm betting most these days, you know, Below the fold, meaning, you know, a single scroll, you're going to struggle to get people to read past. Is that your view too? Yeah, look, definitely the read more link is your friend. So we just want a couple of paragraphs in there and then we want the read more link and then when they click on that, they can see the full article and they can scroll the whole way down. But you just don't want people to have to scroll, 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 scroll. They're going to lose interest. No, That's they the won't. the problem, right? They I'll won't. They'll see it's too long and they're like, I don't have time for this. We're all, we've been pre-programmed by social media. Now we, yeah. we've only got that 30 second or it's probably less. Yeah, that that's fair. Yeah, it's just Connecting it's too with, much. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. And I think the other extreme, and in fact, it's something I'm debating at the moment, is single issue email newsletter thing. So it's rather than a newsletter, it's this is the topic, that's what it says in the title. So somebody knows, you know, even just seeing the title, whether they should open this one. So you're really conditioning them to go, it's quick, it's valuable, but it's one thing. Um, and and if the, you know, people listening are, are in the ensemble community, they would know that because that's how our M communicates with us. So she, you know, is highlighting a piece of content, either they, you know, they've got on the network or out in the public, um, but it's one topic it's a few sentences and you write, read here, you know, click yeah. here. And I actually really like that because it lets me, you know, identify really quickly if this email is relevant to me um, and I don't feel like I've sort of got to put it aside, you know, for a moment later when I can have a cup of tea and scroll. Yeah, um, and go through it all. Yeah. Yes. Now that clearly means you may want to do them a little more frequently, you know, monthly with one topic, may not get it done. No. Um, but it is an interesting thing to debate, you know, yeah, to, definitely. to trial. Um, yeah, you know, and yeah. you'll see it, by the way, that people engage with your content. Uh, well, that's exciting. Okay, so there's a whole lot of things that uh, you guys are going to be able to do for people. Is there anything else I've missed, anything we haven't covered? Oh, I don't think so. I think um, it's a great tool to use and come check us out. Exactly. Oh, to that point, I think you can actually get a sample piece of content on the website, can't you? So you can, if people head over to the Financial Writers Australia uh, website, you can sort of get a, a sample, you know, just yes, with some details. for example, or send us an email. There's contact details on there. Send us an email. Ebony or myself um, will send you out a bunch of example articles so you can get a feel for it and see if it is the right thing for you. Perfect. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about financial writers, then the website link is in the episode show notes. You know the deal, guys. You've heard this before, along with Kelly's LinkedIn details. So feel free to reach out to her via, via LinkedIn, and I'm sure she'll point you in the right direction. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Kelly, uh, and for sort of ensuring that advisors, advisors don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to creating content like this. It's not something we're trained in. Um, so to have the expertise of people like you, I think, you know, we all breathe a sigh of relief. So thank you very much. Oh, my absolute pleasure. It's been wonderful having a chat. So are you one of the current users of Financial Writers? Um, I'm really interested in uh, hearing from those of you who have been using their content and how you've used it. Um, I mean, if you're game, I'd love, you know, somebody to share um, an example within the Ensemble community to say, hey, I am a client. This is one of the things I've done with one of their, con- you know, pieces of their content, um, you know, and really give us a sense of uh, how it can be utilized and, and you know, actually how easy it is to use the tool. Um, so please share your insights on the Ensemble community platform. I personally would love to hear your take. Um, I'm actually starting to think that I'm making content production much harder than it needs to be um, and perhaps getting some written content that I can very easily do a quick video on um, will be the way for me to produce far more consistent content. So now in terms of my thoughts, oh, and something we should cover off, Kelly did mention after we'd hit 
stop record, <laughs> she did mention that they're always looking for writers. So maybe you're an ex-financial advisor or you're current but have always loved writing. And if some, that's something you'd actually like to do on a more regular basis, um, writing financial content, then Kelly would love to hear from you. So once again, her LinkedIn details will be in the episode show notes. So please do reach out. I'm betting that they could always do with a new voice um, and somebody that looks at things a bit differently. So I would encourage you to reach out. And if you secretly love it, but are wondering whether really you're good enough please also do reach out to Kelly because I'm betting you probably are. Um, You probably do have some great value you can add. Now, my thoughts on all of this, um, I've got to admit that whole using written content to um, help you script your videos um, is a bit of a aha moment for me. In fact, let's be frank, it's a bit of a duh moment. (laughs) you idiot, Peter, of course, that's how you should do it. So um, I've sort of ran, you know, was taking a whole lot of notes and thinking this is a great way um, to produce video. Why video? Because for me, I find it really easy to do that. So video and audio is something that um, comes naturally to me. So if I can take somebody else's gift in the messaging and creating the written word, and then I can Peterize it <laughs> um, via audio or video, then I think that could be magic. Um, so that was a bit of a, a real magic moment for me where I think, okay, I could really break through and produce far more volume um, and consistent content for my clients and for your prospects. Um, the other thing I'd say is there's a lot of talk about chat GPT and AI sort of replacing um, content writing. And for starters, um, you've got to take the time to go in and tweak and develop and research in chat GPT. This is not something, there are articles that, you know, the financial writers team produce is not the something, this sort of thing that chat GPT would just spit out for you. Um, However, I think this is something that's not either or, but is, you know, an end. And what I mean by that is you could get content from a tool like like financial writers, a great article, you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's the message that I want to get out to my clients right now. Uh, and then you could feed it into chat GPT and get it to change the tone or style. I mean, you could have an article that sounds like it was written by Eminem or Kermit the Frog or Obama. I mean, like it will change the tone of a writing. Once you feed it in, you copy and paste it into chat GPT and then ask it to you know, rewrite the article as if Eminem is writing it and, and it'll produce sort of a rap poem, you know, for you. So, so you can utilize it to tweak the tone. And because of that, over time, by feeding it more and more of your own style, then you could ask it to change it to the Peter D form or your, your form. I mean, feel free if you wanted to have Peter D style as well, but, but you could um, make it your own style. So once again, we're sort of really um, truncating the time it's going to take us to get something personal that feels like us. Now, invariably what it's going to produce, you're going to tweak a little anyway, but you've probably taken out three or four steps with the combination of financial writers and then something like chat GPT. So to me, this is an end prospect, right? Let's use this to amplify what we can do. That's what tech should always do is amplify. Um, And so if you end up doing that, please let me know. I'd love to see, you know, the article or the video or whatever you've produced And, you know, maybe we can all get better at this communicating with the public. There's a few people in our industry that do it well. I think more of us can do it better and can do more of it. So let's get on on the case of, of connecting and communicating with the public. Now, as you know, there's only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and that is deep and avid curiosity. Uh, And so I'm always here to help you build that habit, as you know. So today's Curiosity Corner app that caught my eye is called Visualize Habit. Now you can find it at visualizehabit.com and the visualize has a Z as the second, what we would have as an S, the second S, it has a Z. So just as a heads up. Um, But what's interesting, this is really simple. This is a really simple, quick tool, but basically it says, all right, what's a habit that you want to start building? How much time do you want to spend on it a day or a week? And then it creates a visual representative representation of what you'll achieve in a year or two or 10. So this is about, you know, the collective effort of 10 minutes a day becomes what for whatever goal you have. Um, it use, uses graphics to do that in terms of, um, you know, imagery for clients. So in fact, it's the sort of thing you could put in a new habit that takes time and you could have this target of this is what you were going to achieve in a year. Now, 
it doesn't have, of course, money as one of those things because this is focusing on time. But I do think there could be lots of ways you could fold this into, you know, something going on each year that shows, wow, you did that every day for a year. Look at the amount of time you've and the progress you've achieved. Look at how many words you've written or meditations you've done or workouts you've done or, you know, how much water you've drunk, all these sort of things that um, could be a result of, you know, just using a tool like this um, to get a result. So, you know, on the drinking water, it's this is how many litres, you know, for writing, it's this is how many words, you know, that sort of thing. So I think it actually could be something that if we're a bit clever, could be a really quick way to capture how much progress they could make in a year. Um, and give them that sort of real uh, visual nature of their goals. So have a play. Let me know what you think. Maybe you'll come up with a far more creative way to use the tool. Um, and, uh, yeah, I reckon – actually, I'm thinking about just creating it from, for this year, what I want to get done this year, including writing a book. So um, I'm a bit excited about just making that a bit more visual and, and motivational. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker to help your audience debate the business case for client portals, you know, I'm happy to do that via a webinar, live on stage, or even a full-blown masterclass that could go for, you know, half a day. Um, Also, I'd really love to understand from you, the listener, any other insights I can bring. Um, I've started doing virtual 30-minute lunch sessions to sort of step people through into taking action on things like advice tech or processes or getting your business humming. So if there's something you'd love me to to set up one of those sessions on, please reach out and let me know. Uh, Best place to reach reach me is on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.